uh, called okay. a meeting to order. And um, I think on the agenda, what we wanted to do was uh, move the agenda items to the next meeting. So the first part would be um, tabling our current agenda for 710 to the 724 meeting. Except for the tax rate. You have to set the tax rate tonight because I need to print tax bills tomorrow. Okay, except for the tax rate. <laughs> Sorry. I would move to table all agenda items except for the tax rate to the July 26th meeting and uh, amend it to discussions about the current and ongoing flood. Yep. So we have a second. Let me I see. Hang on, I, I got a I got a on my phone. I can't. Dave see. said so. Move. So Dave's good. Okay. So there's three of us. So we're good. Okay. All right. So let's um let's just do the tax rate piece first. Okay. And then we'll move on to the the emergency flooding discussions. Okay. So the tax rate in your packet, I gave you all the information. Um, I gave you the state tax rate, the amended equalization study, um, as well as a copy of the updated 411, which is at what is basically a summary of the grand list. Mm -hmm. So the amount to be raised for taxes was two million four hundred two thousand six eleven, uh, which is everything that passed at town meeting, and then including all the additional, the library, the skate park, the playhouse. Um, the local agreement rate is the amount of school tax that we pay on the voted like. Yeah, at some point in the past, you voted to give veterans a $30,000 reduction in their property value. And we also vote every five years to give the Grange, um, make them, you know, tax exempt. So what happens is the law requires that we pay the school tax portion of those things. So that comes up to the $7,676.35. That's what your local agreement rate is. So, and of course, the school tax is set by the state, so we have nothing to do with that. So mm -hmm. it's pretty easy. You take the grand list and, um, you know, divide it out with what you need to raise by taxes, and there's the tax rate. So it is 11.5% over last year. The local agreement rate is down a little bit because um, uh, one veteran sold their house and another veteran did not apply for the exemption, which paperwork mm -hmm. all goes through the state. Um, and then the homestead tax rate is up 0.64. So the overall, that's mean the homestead tax rate is up 5.15%, and the non residential tax rate is up 7.32%. So that the it's so, uh, that's it. <laughs> okay. Do you just need a motion that states yeah. what the tax rate will be? Well, sure. I mean, if it, does anyone have any questions on the tax rate or the math or how we got there? Otherwise, just a motion to approve is fine, Rundley. I would move to approve the 2023-2024 tax rate. Okay, second. Gene's giving you the thumbs up. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, we're good on that. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. So let's, um, let's dive into the emergency situations going on in Bethel. Uh, why don't, um, Therese, why don't you just take us through um, what you and your team have been doing um, up until now, and then after maybe um, kind of explain to us what the next steps will be 
you know, tomorrow morning or the next day or two or um, type deal. Okay. So I got to bed full about 10 o'clock yesterday morning and started doing, you know, additional emergency preparedness things. Obviously, people, we like to think, uh, watch the news and keep track of the weather and that it wasn't a big surprise. But we, I started making, you know, information for obviously uh, from Porch Forum, Facebook, our website. Uh, we had had a small event on Friday where we received three inches within 15 minutes did some significant damage, um, really localized. Interesting because Camp Brook didn't get any rain, but yet North Road got hammered. Right. So, you know, so we already had a mini event on, on Friday. On Saturday, the state of Vermont, as well as Two Rivers, came to Bethel to document uh, because if these become FEMA, which I assume they will, they would be documented as separate events. So if you had damage Friday, but then you had more damage today, those are separate events. So they came to document those. Um, so Sunday, I we talked, we op started opening the emergency shelter and um, we you know, start making all the emergency preps that you can. You start, you know, getting people, your ducks in a row and letting people know, hey, you know what? If you haven't been paying attention, there's there's flood coming. So you do that through Facebook, Front Porch Forum, the website. We had an outgoing message on our office phone that said you can call 211 if you needed a place to stay. You could call 511 for road conditions, you know, and we knew at that point that we were going to open at least the town hall for a shelter. So we did that. Um, so we, I talked to the emergency shelter team. So we made those plans. Um, I talked to the state emergency watch officer and he was scary because <laughs> he said, trees, they're throwing around things like tropical storm Irene. And he's like, it's going to be bad. And I'm like, okay. So uh, last night at, hang on a second, last night, at, thank you, at 6.30, um, we had a meeting at the fire station to, again, get prepared, make sure that everybody, chainsaws were sharpened, everybody had fuel, uh, Morgan had met, you know, talked to the road crew, we made sure that we had um, all of our cones that we had, signage, and all the stuff that you need to do to be prepared. Then um, I stayed in Bethel last night. And then this morning, about 3.15, Morgan was out. Um, you, Morgan was out um, checking roads. Um, I was at the town office at 5 a.m. And we started, um, I just created spreadsheets. And we knew that we were going to have two employees that couldn't come because their homes were being evacuated. And we just started keeping a list of letting, you know, what's going on, where, and then um, Lindley graciously came in and worked the office with us for most of the day to answer phones. Um, and we have just lists of all the roads. We kept track of the time people called, who called, what they reported, dispatch the road crew as needed. I personally dispatched the fire department to evacuate upper Gilead Byam and a portion of Gilead Road first thing this morning I think I dispatched them around 7 a.m. I dispatched them again later to evacuate or start evacuating um, River Street and Graham Street and just to be clear when we evacuate we we ask you to leave <laughs> and we tell you what's going on if you refuse that is your right we may just not be able to come back and get you because we can't risk life and limb to to do that so um, we have just been at it all day um, taking calls. And now I'm hoping that the road crew has gone home. Uh, as I said, Morgan has been out since 3 a.m. and the guys since five get some sleep. Uh, the fire department is out. So if anyone has an emergency, they'll call 911. I would say that the majority of all roads in Bethel are currently closed. So I'm not sure what more we have left to do um, because the volume of water, just the roads and the ground was already saturated. So it was just bringing with it material, trees, 
and it was too much water. The culverts just weren't going to take it all at once. So now what happens is hopefully, fingers crossed, that the rain is stops around 8 or 8.30 tonight. There's going to be what we call a bubble because all the water that has come, you know, up above in the mountains is coming down. We're going to see where we get. We may have to re-evacuate the trailer park because they had gone home because the water had receded once we got a, a state culvert open. But it's going to depend on, you know, that bubble. And the last I saw is overnight there was precipitation but very little bit and maybe a little bit in the morning and then drying out so I talked to Morgan uh the road foreman just before this call he and the guys are going to come out at 6 a.m and they're going to start you know doing roads again and maybe around eight or nine um he's going to come to the office and we're going to regroup and it's all going to be about triage who has the most people on what road is how it's going to get fixed probably by then I will have spoken with our um V Trans representative, as well as Two Rivers, and I, we haven't heard from FEMA yet, but my guess is we will. Um, and as Chris can attest, there is a ton of paperwork <laughs> that goes with that. So we have been drilling that in everybody's head in advance, saying document, 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 and that was part of our pre meeting last night. And um, so I will take my spreadsheet, Lindley's spreadsheet, Kelly's spreadsheet, and kind of put them together tomorrow to see, you know, who's called in. And, and then we're going to make a plan. And obviously, some of it will be done by the road crew. There may be some contractor stuff. Um, luckily, we had already purchased our gravel from... Um, a lot from Pike and they had already been delivering. And I think they may even delivered some today as long as they could get through until 107 was closed. So at this point, um, for lack of a better phrase, we're waiting for the dust to settle, right? And the rain to stop so we can get a true picture. It looks like it's gonna be dry tomorrow afternoon, dry Wednesday, and of course more rain Thursday and Friday, but I don't know how much. Mm -hmm. So hopefully no one loses their home and people are able to go back to their homes in the morning. Last I knew we had 12 people at the shelter, then some people left and some people came back. So um, I'm not sure exactly the number of people we have at the shelter currently, but uh, Denise, God bless her and Joanne Marshall, they are spending the night at the shelter, at the emergency shelter at the school. So it will remain manned overnight. So, which is great. So thank you for that. So that's what I know. And I, um, Therese, I would just suggest um, having, well, kind of b being through that uh, spring flood there event that we had in 2019. <laughs> yeah. Um, because FEMA is a lot of work. So what I would suggest is that we break up our town into different quadrants. Like we did then. Yeah. And, That's then, my each plan. and then each quadrant would have its own set of numbers. Yeah. Um, and then just remember, it, it sounds crazy, but. We have to have pictures of yep. everything before we fix anything. Well, what I did last night, Chris, at the fire department meeting, and then again um, with the road crew, and um, I had people that did not have an Apple that could take a GPS with their phone. I had them download the app, the Solo Locator, so mm. it automatically GPSs because I remembered that you and I and Mo and Judy were out trying to find GPSs for the photos. So right. um, I have asked, so that was pretty clear along with documentation about if anybody, the fire department or the road crew went to a call, it was who was there, how long you were there, what road you're on, what tools you used. Because even if they were using a hand shovel, there's a FEMA rate for that. So this time, yes, we came out of the gate a little more prepared than, you know, you and I picked up the pieces of April. Yeah, they'll, and they'll, if I remember right, the first 24 hours, they'll allow kind of a a lump sum of, they call it emergency period, where you could just kind of lump together your costs during that period. Yeah, they'll let us put it but, back to preconditions. I think we can upgrade culverts by one size during that, which they didn't used to allow us. But basically, you can't put it back better other than an upsized culvert. You can't rebuild, the, you know, you know what I mean? It has to be as well. What, I'm to is, is what before. 
during what they call the emergency period up for making yeah. up. If you're going to bring two truckloads of, of gravel just to get somebody out of their home, yeah. you can just lay it down as a, a blank check type thing. Yeah, but exactly. after that, once you start doing permanent fixes, they all have to be yeah. uh, numbered, according, you know, um, yeah, we have located pictures and the whole nine yards. So yeah, no, that I know we have to bid it all out because I did all the bids for 2019, but it was just after. But no, and I think too, once I pinpoint a meeting, I'll see, you know, what your availability is. I also want to see about Chris Bump and Two Rivers in the state because they will also help us with documentation and laying out the work because some of it's going to be contracts or some of it's not. Um, I will say last I knew our temporary Pinello bridge was also hanging on by a thread. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah. But yeah, so no, I uh, will, I will definitely be requesting help from the state of Vermont to rivers, FEMA, whoever to help us organize our, um, you know, the work stuff. And remember too, Camp Brook road is a federal highway. So they'll come in and we'll get that redone and or fixed. However, and that's a hundred percent covered because it's a federal highway. So we won't have to pay out of pocket for Camp Brook, but we will be on the hook for our ERAP, which is 12 and a half percent of whatever we spend with fixed stuff. So. And how are we doing? Are here now? Yes, Dave, we can. It only took half an hour, but I think I got it fixed. <laughs> Good job. Jeez. And how are we doing in regards to like supplies for the um, emergency shelter and things like that? I, I think that she's all right. The food shelf had gone and donated food. I think Denise was making them spaghetti dinner and salad. for, So they were okay. I talked to the state of Vermont before I came home um, this evening and they are, you know, basically requesting that we stay open overnight because at this point, the only place we could ship people to would be Barrie or maybe um, someplace in Randolph, but they didn't really want people on the roads. And um, but by tomorrow, hopefully people will be able to go home if they can't go home because their home has been lost, then uh, Red Cross usually will come in and work with them to find them um, living quarters or they'll go to a friend's house. So and you can't get into Barry very well right now. <clears throat> um, we have some people from the park that came back. Some are refusing to come back for whatever reason. But there's about 10 or 12 people here now. Um, I was, thank you, Owen, for me because I was starting to get the spaghetti thing ready. And Owen's like, are you going to the meeting tonight? Mm -hmm. I'm like, <laughs> so anyway yeah we're getting spaghetti i've got stuff from the food shelf i have the key i can get more stuff i've got milk and cereal for breakfast tomorrow um yogurts bananas so oh, great we and i have i bought some bread and we have stuff for peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or toasts yeah. so I, we're going to be pretty much set up here tonight and cindy has people coming in tomorrow morning around eight o'clock to take over for us. Great. That's good. So the other thing I forgot it kind of came to me when Denise was speaking is, so I don't know what state the pool is in. Obviously, if the pool was going to overflow, it was going into the parking lot. It wasn't one of my major concerns. And um, but we did have to shut down the Bethel Mills pump station, as well as the St. Hyacinth pump station for the sewer system. Um, they can hold about eight hours worth. Uh, I think that Richard had already, I think when I was leaving town, I saw a truck coming and they will, he was going to have, um, have to have a couple of things pumped out, but Bethel Mills pump station was going to be underwater. So that's why we shut that one down, um, obviously. And uh, so we're holding right now. Um, if he had to have it pumped, then that's fine. It just means it didn't go all the way through the system, but we have it trucked out. The water system is currently operational, um, despite that we're to, at one reservoir because of maintenance. Um, worst case scenario, we lose power on Peavine Boulevard, then we have water for about a day and a half in the um, in the reservoir. We had put out a notice today asking people to slow down their water and sewage usage. Don't flush the toilet all the time. <laughs> and um, so just to kind of, because of the heavy rain that comes into the system and it increases our load so there was a pump truck across the street yep. from the school yep. that left maybe 
Mexico they pumped out over there. Yep, that's yeah. So that'll buy us some time, and um, but hopefully that the rain stops and it recedes, and we, you know, the pump Bethel Mills pump station has been through Irene. Tim redesigned it after Irene, so hopefully, um, you know, fingers crossed. <laughs> so I think that covers every aspect of the town, Chris, as far as. Cool road. Therese, yeah. My grandson will tell you if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. <laughs> yes, I've heard that one. So yeah. So, anyways, that's where we're at with that. So thank you, Denise, for the shelter update. Okay. A question that I have. Well, two comments. One is I called in later this afternoon when I saw water under the bri railroad bridge at Finley Bridge. And that meant that you there was really no access from Randolph getting into Bethel or no Bethel getting out of to Randolph. There was no way to go north. Because That's true. Uh, and I You, we lost you, Dean. Just wanted to be sure you knew that. Okay, yeah, we knew. Um, yep, because also Route 12 by Camper Corners was flooded. There was actually, people were driving through up to like three feet of water. So yeah, at some points there was there, but that was later in the day. Um, earlier yeah. in the day, there was access to get out of Bethel, um, but Yes, and actually when I got out of town, I was going to get the interstate to leave Bethel. And if I hadn't left what I left, I'm not sure I could have got out because 107 was flooding right there by, um, uh, after Ellis Music, there's the church right there. I can't think of its name, I apologize. Um, so it was flooding right there. So we were all like shimmied over in the breakdown lane, taking turns to get through. We. We had no trouble getting down to Hanover and, and we're staying here tonight because I have a procedure in the morning. Okay. Um, they don't seem to have as much rain and water as we do, but that may be because we're not seeing it. We're downtown, mm -hmm. but they're anticipating their rivers cresting at 2 a.m. this morning. Yeah. This, Every, you know, tomorrow morning. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's different. So who knows? Yeah. So Therese, what time did you say that you were going to meet down at the office tomorrow with? I'm, I'm not sure. I just, when I got off the phone, Morgan, I told him eight or nine. So I would just message him when I got into town, I was going to let you know, because I'm hoping it won't be right at eight. My guess is it'll be nine because if they come on at six, they need some time to check some roads, obviously. And I need to figure okay. out if two rivers or Chris bump or someone's coming from the state. Um, but I'll let you know, um, so we could be there, but yeah, I have my map out and I figured we'd do the same thing as April, 2019 and break yeah. it up into quadrants. And, but this time, you know, I'm not sure who's going to help with estimates because last time that was a problem. The estimates weren't good. So for the road work, so. Yeah, I can, um, I'll, we'll that the, up tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'll catch up with you whatever time you want to meet this uh, message. All right. Yeah, we, I will. We can start putting that together. Yep. And I mean, I, we have a lot of the documents from mm -hmm. April, 2019, you know, some, I have all the, um, RFPs and whatnot. And frankly, unfortunately, some of the roads are the same. So, right. But we'll see what we're going to do tomorrow in an emergency. I'm sure that I'll have all sorts of instruction. Um, the state and FEMA are going to let us know what we got to do, but I have, um, all the spreadsheets from the projects that we did before. So, large projects like you say we can keep going and i can't remember if it was 72 hours or how much but once the rain stops we will get boots on the ground and that was the other thing i did have three contractors um strategically in three in different places in town before the storm just in case as well so we did have some pre-placed equipment mm -hmm. okay so just put out to you that um I'm working from, I'm in town this weekend working for myself. So I have flexibility if we need extra hands or I know like during in 2019, 
it was used as a flagger, you know, things like that. So you okay, just, you know. yeah, thank you. I'll let you know because I I don't know honestly with two employees who hopefully do not lose their homes tonight. Um, I just don't know the situation. So yeah, but thank you. You were a wonderful help today because at some point today, Kelly, I said to Kelly, we got to call Lindley because we can't, the two of us can't do this. The phone is ringing too much. My cell phone's ringing. I'm trying to email. I'm like, we, 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 two of us can't handle this. <laughs> so it was great. So thank you so much. And Lily brought me food. So that was wonderful. Therese, I'll be home. Jean and I will both be home in the afternoon. Okay. Soon, soon afternoon. So if I can help with any of the office stuff, stuff please let me know. Okay, thank you. Chris, it looks like Lenny has his hand up. Thank you. Leonard has his hand up. No, I, I just wanted to say uh, uh, thank you so much, Therese. Thank you to Select Board uh, and especially the road crew. When we had the mini event on Friday, they came out on Saturday about two hours after I called and they fixed the car, but they, they made it open and they put some hard pack down so we could use the road. Of course, everything today was washed away <laughs> after it again, but of course, I was, was. Really, I was really impressed by that, and I want to say thank you. Well, I saw your front porch forum post, and I uh, copied and pasted it and sent it to Morgan because, thank truth you. be told, uh, Thomas, we get a lot of complaints, but it's rare that someone takes the time to send a compliment, mm -hmm. and it really meant a lot to to Morgan, and he always shares those with his guys. So, thank you for taking a minute. It was I, mean, I, I, I tried to tip the guys, but they didn't want to take the money. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you, Therese. Yeah. I know there's some restrictions with FEMA and the funds we get to re you get to reimburse and to fix things. Yeah. But it seems like these storms are teaching us that some of the, the culverts are just too small. Absolutely. Is, is there no way to petition that so that we can make changes? Do they have any format for that so that we can actually make changes to those? Sure. Yeah, because we did do, we have this whole wonderful actually it's, it's cool this whole binder about all the culverts and we replace mm -hmm. them and when we replace a culvert we automatically upsize right um, that's usually that's just mm -hmm. the plan and and any grant that we get to do road work we upsize the culverts what mm -hmm. fema used to do was if you had a 15 inch you only got a 15 inch now they have mm -hmm. saw the error of their ways so if fema say you have a 15 inch and we come in we're going to put in an 18 inch and, okay. um, and it's hard to, because you're sizing for 500 year storms sometimes. Right. So for us to take your culvert and say, okay, we're going to go from 15 to 24, maybe just be unreasonable, but we do always mm -hmm. size up. And well, when we look for projects, we have this big binder and two rivers did a whole inventory of all of our roads and culverts. Mm -hmm. And that's how we get a lot of our grant money, Leonard. They, right. uh, we pick what they're called is hydrologically connected segments. Okay. And if you're near a river, so sediment and things are running off, those are priority. And we have this whole book of medium high priority. And um, I have a grant right now that has to be done by the end of September. And that's going to be on Macintosh. So sometimes what we do is we look at that and do a high priority. So if old route 12 was on there, but it's a low priority and we only get one of these grants a year, you know how it rolls. I just find it strange that like up top here, we have this large culvert and at the bottom funneling into that, we have a smaller cul culvert. Yeah. I just find that strange. <laughs> it could be, <just> <laughs> Who knows what happened originally, yeah, no, right? We had a bridge yeah, there that went. Yeah, I don't it, know the whole history, but probably it's our, not. It's not uncommon in this town. Up, oh. up on our hill, we have a four foot culvert that dumps into a three foot culvert. Yeah, yeah. It's washed out three yeah. times in the last ten years. Yeah, I just yeah. put back a three foot culvert. So yeah, it's just we okay. look at that. <clears throat> Yeah, when, when, when Irene happened, we asked the crew that was here, it was not a Bethel crew, it was, a, a I think, a FEMA crew. Uh -huh. said, like, can't you, it's open, just put a new bigger culvert in it. And they said, no, we can't do that. And they just dumped mm -hmm. dirt on it, and that was that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it is. It's funny. And, and some of it is we just don't know why it was what it was. And, and a lot of times, you know, when you put in a culvert, it lasts a long time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's mm -hmm. just kind of the way it goes. But... There is, um, when we are replacing them, there's a method to the madness. 
Yeah. Why they are the way they are now, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Thank you. Your guess Thank is you. as good as mine. Yeah. Are we allowed to pour concrete headwalls? The town of Bethel? Yeah. Uh, it depends, we, Dave. We, um, yes, sometimes we can. It's the headwall that gives out. Yes, we can. Yeah, it depends on the on the job. If it are it with the project, I guess I couldn't say as a blanket statement. It depends how big the culvert is, whether or not I need to get permission from A and R for Jaron Bork or that sort of thing. But yes, we can. Sometimes we put in our own, or we'll use stone. It just depends on the situation. But usually, a lot of times we use precast, right, Chris? Isn't that what we used up on? Uh, where the heck? Didn't we do one up on Christian Hill? And I think we used a precast date. Most, I mean, most of the culvert issues are are due to um, debris. And you know, I think, I don't know, culverts are tricky. We can't just, it's kind of like doing a speed study for a road. You know, you want to uh, theoretically slow the road traffic. So you do a speed study and you find out that traffic goes faster. So the, they won't allow you to... Um, lower the speed and it's kind of the same thing with the culverts is um the engineers have to get out there and and approve the size of the culvert they put in and most of the time what damages the culvert is the is the debris that comes from uh, from down you know um tree debris rocks that kind of stuff so um but you know that i looked at, i looked at pictures of that culvert out on uh on the Peavine Road out towards the old cross of the uh, fish hatchery. And I'll bet, cause I've known, I saw what that looked like and that didn't have much of a head wall on it. And it might've started when the culvert started to get full to seep around. And once it starts seeping around that head wall, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. That I, I know. I mean, we don't, I mean, and that's a trick that in Vermont, like, none of our roads in Vermont are built for any type of uh, large flood event. None of them are. I mean, you would, you would need culverts the size that you drive trucks through, you know, um, and it, it'll probably never happen. And that's kind of the challenge with it is, but um, FEMA does allow us to build back and, and in a lot of cases build back better. Um, like in the 19 flood, we were able to, you know, install either uh, rock swales where we didn't have them before and, couple of cases we put some culverts in that made sense that we didn't have before so um yeah it's frustrating that we'll have to you know just as we uh dig out of one we're <laughs> rebuild it again you know i feel like we live uh in a hurricane yeah you know peninsula in florida or something you know it's i know but, it is frustrating you know i i will say that from a bit been out and about all day um you know, I, I, I don't think you're ever 100% ready for any type of event, but I think that um, everybody involved today um, seems to have a plan and, and um, you know, there's a lot of good coordination going on out there. Um, you, know, you know, a lot of it's kind of your hands are tied. You kind of got to wait for the storm to pass. Um, seems like everybody, the coordination is pretty good on you know, when to close things, um, getting some of the mo uh, mobile equipment in early. Um, a few culverts we were able to unplug early this morning that could have led to bigger issues if we hadn't done that. Um, so that was good, uh, which I think, you know, like the one up here with Derek Altigary did, um, you know, probably save the trailer park. Um, and then obviously the road spill, uh, the water spills over across the street into those houses um on the east side of of uh, route 12 so i think you know i think there's some cases that we've been more proactive this time that has saved it's hard to say but has mm -hmm. saved other potential issues that we could have had bigger ones mm -hmm. um i i would say i didn't want to say this but you know it definitely is very very similar to irene type um weather today other than it took longer for the rain to hit which i think in some cases gave us more time to react to the storm which was nice um but um i yeah everybody's been doing a great job i definitely would make sure that everybody gets plenty of rest tonight because it's going to be 
you know, a long couple of days, you know, two or three days just to get everybody mobile again. Right. I mean, people, so they can get out of their houses and then we'll work on the long-term fixes. So. Exactly. Um, and to, to sort of second what Chris said, I do agree that we were far more prepared. And I think so much of that is a testament to Therese and Therese being ahead of things and, you know, getting the crews and all the different areas ready and on standby. And so thank you. That, that's huge. Well, thanks. I mean, some of it too was just, you know, timing. People really that have been here through Irene before have been really helpful just saying, okay, Therese, this is what happened before. And then of course, getting it, you know, handled, or, or at least some of, sorry, but at least it didn't come all at once. That was really the issue with Irene, and and we just couldn't, you couldn't have done anything different. And and um, but yeah, it's a little frustrating. Just feel like we're going, yeah. you know, like we just did this. <laughs> so, yeah. But we'll get through it. Yeah. Better, just like the Bionic Man. What was his slogan? Like better. Bigger, Longer, faster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's us. Yeah. I mean, I think um, the only thing that I'm a little concerned on right now is you're going to get, um, you know, we're going to get the second wave of yep. people reaching out for mm -hmm. help, which will come tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. You know, after the storms are done, then they everybody's going to think they can all get out at, at their house at the same time. Um, so however we can communicate with, uh, once we make our game plan tomorrow morning of, you know, the priorities of the roads and stuff, yep. somehow we get that information out to people um, so yeah. they can kind of start, okay, well, it looks like it's going to be a day for me, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that's going to be it. I mean, once we, you know, we're going to look at the heavier traveled routes, uh, we need to look at any farms, any businesses that, you know, need to be you know, they're impacted. So um, we had that issue after April 2019, any farms so that milk isn't being dumped that you're, you know, getting the farm trucks in and out, um, you know, so definitely just looking and seeing what's, um, you know, those are all play into the priority, how many houses, that sort of thing. Mm. Okay. Well, still all right. Yeah. Just, just text me um, later. What time you want me to show up in the yeah. morning? I'll Thanks. Okay. Yeah, I probably, yeah, I, I, I will, I'm sure I'll get it probably when I hang up tonight, I'm sure I'm going to have several email, more emails. I've got 18 million text messages. And just tell Morgan if he needs any help tonight, just uh, text me and I can come out and help him. Okay, I'll let him know. Well, again, thank you all for all that you do. Much appreciated. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah, so it's always help if I, you know, getting the word out. We appreciate that if you follow something on facebook or however mm -hmm. facebook works you like it you whatever love it i don't spread it around <laughs> so that's always helpful to us is facebook from porch forum and you know just trying to get the word out so yeah. we always appreciate anybody sharing that sure. right i mean it's 11 fair plug your own all right uh anything further to take up with the board this evening not that i can think of no Yep. Anything else from the board member? Just a, a quick reminder, I won't be at the next meeting. Now, let's talk about that. Are you going to come via Zoom or you're not going to be there at all? <laughs> no, this is the one where I'm in the wilderness. Okay, I, I'm writing it down. No Lindley for no real. No Lindley at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm writing it down. Nope. Okay, for real this time, no Lindley. All right. <laughs> one of us may remember. We'll see. Okay. I'll put Denise in charge. That's right. Denise has got it. Are we going to reschedule this meeting to hit the other items or just move We're, them? They, oh, yeah. Meeting? I put it in the first part of my minutes I took that, that they are, um, they're, they tabled all the other issues to July 24th, except for setting the tax rate. Okay. But I guess it's not really as bad as. All right. Oh, I have one question. Uh, the Energy Committee is scheduled to meet tomorrow night at the town hall. Should that be rescheduled? I, I don't see why not. I guess it depends if your people can get there or not. There's, Thank nobody, you. there's nobody there now, so. Yeah. Okay. 
And I won't have any idea what that's going to look like tomorrow. Yeah, then maybe you want to message and postpone it till next week just for, you know, safety. You've got nothing pressing that has to be decided tomorrow, I guess. Right. Um, then, yeah, you might want to okay. put out a message out telling them, hey, you know what? Maybe we ought to give it a rest a week just to be safe. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. Anything else? If not, just need a motion to adjourn. So move to allow Therese a nap and a good night's sleep. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple hours of sleep last night. <laughs> that good? All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks. You too. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.